everybody, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt, that's Alonzo, that's Meredith, and that is Bibbs. Hi. We have the, reached the finale. The, yes. the Defenders. They're finally defending, right. because this is called The Defenders. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, should we have just skipped to this episode? Is that Maybe, was, uh, this I, is all yeah, we needed yeah. to know? Yeah. Because here's the deal, we've been waiting for all of these solo series for them to team up. Mm -hmm. That's they were promised that from the beginning. This was not a surprise. They knew that they were building to this. So we have some fan service. We had a lot of interactions. It's great. But now this is the finale. They're calling this the Defenders. This has got to be the big deal climax. Everything leads up to this. And I got to be honest. I think they kind of airballed it. <laughs> I, wouldn't I don't know, know that. Worth, that I don't know if this is worth it. I this episode left me mad. Mad at the series. Please explain for a variety of reasons. Well, we can. I, mm, I think I thought it was I thought it was fine. I think it, they could have done something bigger and better, but there's I think there's enough good in here. You know, and a lot of it's the dialogue, a lot of it is kind of seeing the characters do the stuff you want them you want to see them do, right? And so, you know, I know I keep going back to the dialogue, but I, a lot of my notes are are the fun things people say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when they're talking about what they're up against, Right, and somebody says something about fighting crime, and and Claire says not just crime, like horror movie <laughs> murdery shit. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I liked that one. I liked when they're all in the elevator, and Matt's kind of smiling and, and says, I, "I'm glad you're all here." <laughs> and they, and Jessica and Luke are both like, "What? Don't hug me." <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. And Luke's like, "I'm not hugging you." I love what Gal calls uh, when she's talking about the three of them. You know, the the devil's. Like, yeah, they all have these super cool monikers, yeah. monikers, right? Mm -hmm. Like, those are better names than Power Man and <laughs> what was she? Um, Jewel. Jewel, Jewel, right? Jewel. Like, yeah. the man Jewel. who does not break and the unyielding woman. <laughs> like, yes. that's a good title. I know. Those are good titles. Right? Those are good titled. Um, you know, Matt. Uh, yeah, the I, devil of hell. I don't have. Right. Well, I want to make it clear. I actually don't have a problem with the actors. I think even Finn Jones has actually come out of his shell more in this series because he has more interesting people to interact with. The supporting cast in Iron Fist, with the exception of Colleen Wing, was not great. So now he's actually interacting. <laughs> and with except for Colleen, they're not here. Yeah. You'll yes. Yeah. No. Exactly. Even when they had an opportunity to bring Ward in to just solve something, it's like we couldn't get Ward back. We could call him on the phone. No, right. we'll just talk to a secretary. Like right. that's yeah. That, the yeah. Meachams are yeah. out of yeah. yeah. So like now that he's actually got more interesting characters to interact with and more interesting things to do. I like Finn Jones more, mm -hmm. certainly, as Iron Fist. I still think Iron Fist is a poorly written character who didn't have a lot to do with this except be the MacGuffin, and I think that was disappointing. But uh, that, the, again, the cast is fine, and whenever they were interacting, the writing was often on point. But a lot of it was simply, where is the event here? Because honestly, they're gonna fight a whole bunch of faceless ninjas. They're gonna fight the five fingers of the hand, most of whom we hadn't met before. And to our and, dad. And, and yeah. Uh, but they're and gonna blow up a building. Uh, they're gonna, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Like okay. that, they've done that before. That was in Daredevil season one, and they did it successfully. Oh, that's they, right. They did a whole. <laughs> this, this isn't escalating. And when they finally like, and they're building up to what is this thing that they're digging to underneath? And it was like, it's yeah, the, skull it's, of a, the bones of a dragon. It's actually not that interesting, especially I, when. And as I kind of teased this before. Electra takes over the hand, what are they gonna do? Exact same thing they were gonna do anyway. The only difference is Alexandra's gone. Well, the only person who's gonna kill Alexandra and make it satisfying was Electra, so you get it out of the way. But it, this is just continuing a pace. That was not a twist. That didn't lead to any significant changes. This ends the same way regardless, with Matt fighting Electra in the bowels of the earth and everyone else getting away. This is everything is too reset at the end of this well, for my taste. I, Jessica is back okay, where she was with a few on, friends she doesn't talk all right, to very all right, much. All right. Okay. I I think they have a tough balance to fit here, right? Because if it if it escalates too much, then everybody's, you know, including people like Misty and the Captain, are like, we got to call the Avengers, right? Right, mm -hmm. and that's that's the thing is is I think the where they're trying to thread the needle, and it, I think it ultimately affects the drama is you got to keep the story small enough that these four who live in a world where they know that there are these other super powered major characters. Don't call up Stark. Don't call mm -hmm. the government and say, "Hey, look, we need something real here." Like, what's it's Stark remain, doing today? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's got to remain something that they feel that it has to at least externally appear right. to be something it, that, that is they small can kiddos, handle. Right. Yeah. Like they say that they're in over their head, but not so much. Again, like they live in a world where there is a Hulk, there is an Iron Man, there is mm -hmm. a Thor, there is a Captain America. 
who is who has a government run Avengers arm at this point, if we yeah. remember what happened in Civil War. And so it can't be so big that they feel like they have to call him. And I, and so I get where you're coming from, but I appreciate all of that. You're absolutely right. That is a tricky balance they have to strike. But I'm hesitant to let that be an excuse for an ending that simply didn't bring out the drama. I think part of this is that ultimately the characters we meet in the hand, with the exception of Madame Gao, who's been built up and actually does have that awesome force blast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, th that was actually really cool. And she's a real threat. And I buy her. The other members of the hand simply aren't that threatening to me. They're pretty generic villains because we haven't spent a lot of time with them. And they're dispatched ultimately very easily. This ends up with the defenders with fighting a bunch of Martial artists, basically, and I'm just like that's. I, we've seen that. I was oh, I was oh, more interested in Colleen, Claire, Misty, and Bakudo yes. in the lobby than I was with everybody in, in the in yeah. So that's how they because they know. feel outmatched. <laughs> the defenders don't feel outmatched here. Yeah. They they're fighting yeah. people they've defeated or at least escaped from successfully many times. Colleen and Claire are outmatched, and it makes it much more interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like in The Matrix Reloaded, where anytime Neo shows up, I don't care, I'm not super concerned. Mm -hmm. But then in that freeway fight, he's not there, and everyone else is totally screwed. And so there are stakes, and it feels like the most interesting part of, this, of the story. Well, okay, I, but I don't agree with the outmatching part. And I think there is some drama there. And I, and I think I'm a little bit more satisfied. I mean, I'm clearly more satisfied with this ending than you are. Mm. I, like, I think they could have done better, but, you know, one of the fingers does get. Dispatched, Bakudo gets dispatched by three people who, it, it, you know, one of whom notably loses her arm in the mm -hmm. process, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and it, and the defeat of Bakudo does complete Colleen's story in yes. a very satisfying way. Wasn't that completed that, already in Iron Fist though, when he died the eh, first time? I just felt like we're backtracking in order to get to the same place. Well, same but thing he with didn't, Colleen, but okay, but with he didn't, Misty's arm, which right. they almost cut off in Luke Cage, but, but then they saved it till now. Right, but he, okay, but first of all, like the body disappears in. At the end of Iron Fist, so he's clearly not dead, right? Yeah. And it, and we've we've seen that her emotional impact. We've seen Colleen's have emotional choices to make because when Bakudo talks to her, it is seductive, and she wrestles with that. Um, and then you know, are they fighting superpowered ninjas? Sure, right? Uh, Murakami is pretty generic. Gao is interesting, but. We've also seen that Electra is entirely capable of taking them all on herself. Yes. Okay. And so, and she's down there in the mix. So, from a standpoint of what they're up against, I think they are there are stakes there, coupled with Matt's emotional impact, which the show pays off. Right. We get to the point where, at the end of it, Matt sends everybody else on his way so he can stall for time, and that fight scene, like he does, as we see, he does finally get through to her. In a really like the fighting gets to be this really flirtatious kind of sexy thing, which no. I thought was kind of cool. I do like their kind of pas de deux, but to yeah. get there, we have to no, go through I a lot of like yeah. henchmen. You know. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of that. To be perfectly honest, one is that I feel it's a little repetitious with Daredevil season two because this ends very much the same way. Daredevil going to the dark side, Matt trying to talk her out of it, Electra seemingly dies, and of course she probably doesn't because there's no body, and then Matt somewhat destroyed at the end of it. Okay, but when you think about it, is he He's buying them all time to get away. Well, I mean, yeah, but he could have also just chased Electra around elsewhere. He didn't have to stay down there and fight her. He could have left it too. I don't really see why we had to do that. I don't do think all he this. could. No, I don't think so. Yeah, because Matt I think wouldn't. What, well, she gets away. He doesn't want her to die. He can, he can have that conversation another day or he can die together. Go ahead, Meredith. I, was just, I think Matt. Knew he needed to stay down there. I think Matt was willing to sacrifice himself. Sure. I don't. I think that's right. what the part. That's what he told. That's why he uh, tells I, Danny, know, Danny. Yes. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to stay here and guarantee she dies. And it's kind of one of those. If she dies, I'm going to die with her. Mm -hmm. Because Matt sees the only way out of being Daredevil is death. Right. And and okay, I'll grant you that's a big that's a big moment for him. But I just feel it's kind of neutralized by the fact that we know that he didn't die. Well, we know. And then well, it kind of well, just like, well, you we know, knew just, that because we're getting Daredevil seasons, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. granted. Yeah. Well, although and, although and, Iron Fist could have taken that over. And as, we as see we've said, yeah. you know, which we see at the end, right? Like him yeah. sitting on the rooftop. Yeah. I have thoughts about right. that too. Mm -hmm. um, and we all know nobody stays dead in the comics, yeah. right? Yeah. Nobody will stay dead unless you are. Uncle Ben or, or Bruce Wayne's parents, Martha yeah. or Thomas Wayne. That's it. But uh, actually, uh, Thomas came back. But anyways, that's well, another another, thing, another time. <laughs> uh, did we did we all catch the Frank Miller shout out? Oh, at the yeah. Very end, oh the yeah. Tell, yeah. Tell Maggie, yeah. which is Matt's mother, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 It ends basically with him in a place where he was kind of in Born Again. Yeah. Right. And they have the stage set mm -hmm. for Born Again. Kingpin's in prison. Oh, it's, that's it's a lot to totally what they're going yeah. for. It next. should be cool. So we'll excited. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Ultimately, you know, I thought there were some. I mean, look, this is a show that it does take a while to end like after all the events happen yeah. 
you know, it, you know, you got to get everybody's wrap up, right? Mm -hmm. You got Jessica still hard drinking, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. offers to maybe we'll go get coffee oh, with Luke. Oh, mm -hmm. I know. I was gonna be like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, come on, you guys are gonna have a baby. Also, I really liked <laughs> going. I don't know, but I like Luke and Claire. I like Luke and Claire. Like, I, know, oh, I, know. Yeah. I think they're better um, for each other. I do also want to going back to the last episode how we talked about you know Matt and his secret identity and how some people don't want to be known as superheroes. We see that moment with Jessica and Trish because Trish is like, are you sure you don't want recognition? Right. And she's like, no, mm -hmm. you know, no. and that's and that's Jessica. Like right. she might not put on a costume or. A mask, right. but she just doesn't want that recognition. And that's where she was at the beginning yeah. of this whole thing, where she didn't want recognition mm -hmm. for the previous right. stuff either. Yeah. Right. And, she, and going back to the Luke and, and Jessica moment, like that they finally make peace with the death of his wife. I yeah. thought that was a great, yeah. great mm -hmm. little scene. And then the scene with Karen and Foggy mourning over Matt in yeah. the church. I thought that was a nice scene too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, a really quick nice scene. That elevator fight scene at the end when they're going up. I really, I just fun. like, like also. Turtles in Time, anyone? Do Turtles in Time. Do no. you guys remember that? <laughs> yeah. That was like, Turtles in God, time. that was. Oh my God, I haven't seen that in a while. No, well, it's, yeah. it's a video game. It's a video it's, game. It's oh, okay. a video game. There's a huge oh, elevator. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know what the fuck. Um, also, that's I'm the, the about. slowest elevator in oh, the world. Oh, I thought you were talking about Ninja Turtles 3. No, yeah. no, but, they go but back in time. I do want to go back to, like, again, we just see how disposable Murakami is. Yeah. Because I had, even I had troubles, like, wait, which one? Where? Like, it was just. Like I, I haven't gotten to like give a couple of my wrap ups that I wish this episode had been the second to last episode because I think they could have built up down uh, the underground scene a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I also think like, well, um, Danny makes one like quick like, oh my God, this is the dragon. Like it's, there's a bit of um, inconsistency and left me questioning, was this the dragon he fought because he called it Shao Lu? Um, I didn't catch that. See, I, I caught, yeah, I caught yeah. that. And so I was like, so is that just what those dragons are called? Or was this specifically the dragon that well, he fought? Well, if, if they've destroyed other cities in the past, yeah. my assumption is there's a bunch of these dragon right. skeletons yeah. all oh, over no, the world. Of course, right. of course. But Honestly, it's just, though, Danny seemed to like make it, it's like you're desecrating this particular dragon. The, it seemed one he seemed intimately familiar the with. The dragon didn't really work for me, to be perfectly honest. I think it doesn't feel like maybe when they were writing the series at the beginning that mm -hmm. it worked so much at the end. Because at the beginning, Alexandra said they paid $24 to New York and they overpaid. Yeah. Which implies that she doesn't value it, and here we find out that it actually is the single most important also, plot of land in the world. Also, they keep stressing about New York is going to fall once we mine this dragon. How are you going to mine that entire dragon, dragon in is, like eight hours? The dragon is big enough to affect the structural and integrity of like all of New York. And it was going to take them years to get yeah, this operation underway. At least underway. it's going to take okay, a morning. And you know what? And, and just because you make the island of Manhattan collapse, it's yeah. not going to affect you know like Long Island and. Yeah, but it's magic. I know. Right. I know. Take the magic away, and the whole thing falls. I apart. know. I just. It just. That, it's all going to go to Roosevelt Island. Nuts. That's where we're going to yeah. live now. It, it, that that, that mm. I thought was a bit of a letdown. Yeah. But someone actually, I think we floated on the show. The someone mentioned the idea that um, when they destroy a city, all the ashes of the people who yeah. died. Yeah. That, yeah. that is way more dramatic. That would have been really yeah. cool. Exactly. Instead, MacGuffin dragon. Like, I was like, mm. oh, they're just mining the bones. Like, yeah. Mm. It's MacGuffin the magic dragon. It doesn't really. Right. Work. I would have loved. It would actually like they could have done that if it was like, look. Mm -hmm. We're gonna light these bones on fire, and the city's gonna explode. Exactly, and, and that's and that then we take those deep. ashes right. yeah. and we Again, snort them. And also, now that <laughs> the <day. laughs> also also those bones that uh, make you live forever didn't help the dragon live forever, no. did they? No, well. Also, the that door out. that sealed the dragon, which was just a door, but you could still mine other parts, I guess. That door is still open now. They just caused. The yeah, building yeah. to collapse. They're digging right yeah. now. They say that right then. They can just dig that sucker up. Yeah, it's still I, I there. I know. I'm sorry. It's just like certain inconsistencies that throw I me. Mean, the hand. This. I know Comics. these were the, I know I know. the five fingers of the hand. It's a bigger <laughs> organization than that. There are other people who are immortal within it. They're just going to fill the power vacuum and go right back Dr. down there. Yeah, exactly. They're just going to go right back down there. Yeah. Look, I, fingers I, of I, I guess, the women. My point is that <laughs> Defenders was what we were building to. It was mm -hmm. a build up, and even the things they built up within the Defenders don't really play that well. Like they have this whole thing about, oh my God, they're going to go after all our love. Ones. This is the most important thing ever. We have to protect yeah. all of them. I thought they were put they were putting them all in one place. I thought we were setting this up for like the Terminator, but with ninjas where they storm uh, the police department. Mm -hmm. Turns out all their loved ones are fine. The only one who's actually injured is Misty because she literally threw herself into the action. But, all of that led to nothing. We get bionic arm Misty in the future, hopefully, yeah, maybe. Because here's the thing: she almost lost her arm in Luke yeah. Cage, but now she lost her arm and it's Danny's fault. Thanks. So but now he gets to pay, pay for the new yeah. arm. I mean, and now he's paid for bionic arm. As, so I guess that's the only yeah, reason. Yeah, as Colleen makes it. Very clear, all of his resources, all of them are at your disposal. Well, also, 
Yeah. Oh, also just like two little things that I caught um, because I'm learning to pause with things uh, on the whiteboard. Uh, we got that her attending nurse was Linda Carter. No, not Wonder Woman, but Night Linda Nurse. Ca- night Nurse. Uh, the original yeah. Night Nurse. Was the original Rachel McAdams. No, like that wasn't wasn't a no. no, no, that was um, no, that was another one. And then okay. Doctor Wortham is a reference to Cardiac, a Spider-Man villain. Oh, yeah, oh good well, catch. also Frederick nice. Wortham is the guy who wrote Seduction of the Innocent, oh, which was the book that demonized yeah. comic books in the 1950s and well, led to the creation of the comics. Well, that though. could also be where they gave Doctor either Wortham. either way. Yeah, but the All last right. the, sorry, the last thing I just want to say because we we didn't talk about Danny's Dana mob how he how he oh, ends up yeah. because he, yeah. we see up we see the 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 silhouette we think it's going to mm-hmm. be Matt Murdock turns out it's Danny because in a Matt, tracksuit Matt Murdock told Danny to, like protect my city right. save yeah. my city uh, and Danny. Who had a long conversation with Luke Cage about how the best way he could do that is use his billions of dollars to actually influence people? Has decided I'm going to be the vigilante. He can do both. No, he can't. He He's, can do one thing, but he can spend money successfully. He can't yeah. superhero Listen, successfully. He, well, okay. He's had two seasons of television okay. proving well, that he can't. He wants one to be one could do both. Yeah. Danny Rand specifically, yeah. maybe not so much. I mean, what is that? Danny doesn't feel like he learned anything out of this. He's just going to do the same shtick. I'm just a little he, disappointed. He learned to like New York more. That's it. He liked New York already. I just wish he, he had gotten a like better costume because whenever we get like that cool right. daredevil, like he's literally in a tracksuit. He yeah, is in so a tracksuit. And the thing is, They've you actually want the big collar. Yes. Yes. And yes. here's the thing, because Danny has mm-hmm. been such a dope. Yeah. It is entirely believable, consistent with that character, mm-hmm. that he ends up. He's like, yeah, this the traditional Kunlun <laughs> costume <laughs> from the Iron Fist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, that's- and and Luke would endlessly make fun of him. He'd be like, mm-hmm. what? Uh, no, I have to wear this. And that would be amazing. This is what the immortal Iron Fist right? wears. Yeah, come, come on. on. And then uh, Luke could get his little tiara back. No, I missed no, the tiara. He, no, <laughs> no, no. As he said, I know. you look like a damn fool. I uh, do like how they've been subtly using the bright yellow throughout the whole yeah. thing. Oh, he yeah, wears shirts yeah. in his collar, whatever. Yeah. It evokes it without making it a big deal. I thought that yeah. was cleverly done. I All didn't, right. I didn't hate the Defenders. I had fun watching it. Mm-hmm. it you know, Iron Fist is still a pill. I mm-hmm. mean, th- this is, I thought of it this way. This show is a beautiful, delicious stone soup, but the stone without question is Iron Fist. It's like he's the thing yeah. that we gotta work around that we're sort of stuck with and that they haven't figured out yet how to make right. him interesting, how to make the character work. But we get Jessica, we get Luke, we get Matt, we get all this other stuff. And yeah, you're right, the, the, there's, a, there's implausibilities and there's plot things that don't make sense. And this is all sort of vamping until the Punisher, which is what yeah. we really wanna see. <laughs> we but, used to really wanna see Defenders. I know, I know. Because again, I, but my thing is this. It, 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 it's, it's what James Rocky calls the, the anticipation industrial complex, yeah, that right. all these superhero movies only exist to, to whet your appetite for the Look, next one and the next one and the next one. We wanted to see them all interact, but ultimately what we really got out of this was the people we hadn't seen interact before, which is Jessica Jones and Matt Murdock and Danny Rand and Luke Cage. We could have just done that in their respective well, series. They've done the crossovers before. So this basically is what are they all teaming up for? And it ended up being kind of a whole lot of meh to me. Like I, I there's highlights. Right. I want a Claire show work. where they just sort of wander in and out. It could okay. <laughs> you know, it could have been better. Like I agree with you, they built it up, but the fun stuff was really fun in this. What yes, they right. did do was really enjoyable. And I'm excited about the team up team ups that are gonna come up in future episodes because I don't need Captain America or Thor to show up, but I do want to see more uh, Daredevil and Jessica Jones. And yeah. I want, I want, I want my daughters of the dragon. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. I, I, I don't mind this Netflix universe. Yeah. Yeah. Except for Iron Fist. Uh, uh, I think you could do far worse than bringing in both Luke and mm-hmm. Jessica as kind of the sardonic realist reactions to all of the other insane stuff that happens in the rest of the Marvel universe, right? Like I want to see Jessica make fun of Captain America for being so righteous. Yes. I want to see her make up funny mm-hmm. names for Iron Man um, or whatever. So yeah. I, I think this delivered. They'll for try me, to make her go to rehab and she'll right, say no. She'll yeah. say no. Uh, there was just enough in this for me that it, it worked. It could have been better, but it, it, you know, yeah. it was fun. 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 Yeah. I had an adequate time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well done, Netflix. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>